learn about finance, about money. I think that is so powerful. As much as you are learning about your skill, developing yourself, if you don't know so much about money, I think it's not so good. Why? Because the knowledge you have about money is what you will use to develop your gifting, your talent, or in order for you to be able to move in, your, in the music industry, to move forward. So I'm just going to quickly rush through a few points uh, about finance and what has been able to help me to sustain, has been sustainable for me over the couple, last couple of four or five years. Yeah, building G Factor, as you all know, building the studio. And um, yeah, so I'm, we're just going to go through it uh, quickly, yes. Okay, yeah, so financial intelligence. Uh, what is financial intelligence? Financial intelligence is the ability to see both sides of the coin from the edge. So it's the ability for you to stay in the middle of both sides. So when you have money, what guards your thought process, how you think about money, that's financial intelligence. So you're able to think, okay, should I make this decision? Should I invest in this? Should I not invest in this? Yes, that is what financial intelligence will do for you. So it helps you to stay in the middle, so you're able to balance what to spend on, what not to spend on. Yes. So because for somebody like me now, in the last three, four, five years, I know everybody can tell. It's not like I don't see fine cars or all those things, man. But there are some things that are imperative. There are some things that are um, very, very important for you to do today. It's like a seed. So those things are called seeds. So you will not use your seed time to be eating fruits or use your seed time to be plucking leaves. That seed time is time for seed. And what will happen to seed is every seed will germinate. Every seed must grow and every seed must become a tree one day. And you can now pluck from that tree to do whatever it is that you want to do. That's what financial intelligence will do for you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so um, financial history, just a little bit. I'm just going to rush through. Um, this is called the Entitlement Wagon. I'm sure we can see it. So in, um, in 1940, um, we had fewer people in, say, let's take the wagon as the economy. So we had fewer people that um, were on the wagon that the government were catering for, not just in America, but all over the world. And it was easy for the government. It was very, very easy. But as time moved on till uh, 1998, we now have more people on the wagon, which meaning that more people are dependent on the government to take care of them, uh, not knowing that they are supposed to actually learn these fundamentals that you are learning today so that they can be able to um, provide for themselves. So in uh, 2013, we have more people on the wagon and fewer people carrying the wagon, which means that the government now has more body. So when you hear people complaining the government is bad, yes, especially in Nigeria, the government can be bad or is bad, but as a people or as a person, you have a personal responsibility for your financial decisions. So you are responsible on what you spend on, what you eat, what you buy, what you wear. That's your responsibility. Uh, yeah, so that's your responsibility. Okay. I'm just going to... Okay, yes. So um, this is something that is very, very critical. So assets, liabilities. So I'm sure we all know the word asset, liability. So if I ask somebody now, what is an asset? What is an asset? Somebody, just tell me. Don't tell me what is here. Just tell me what you think an asset is. That's what an asset is. Okay, so what's a, what's a liability? Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> so, sorry. Um, an asset is something that you have that is productive. Okay. That, that, that gives you, like, that gives you something on a daily basis for, I don't know. Okay, okay, yeah, that, that's fair. So, so asset, is, um, asset is what brings value. Asset adds value to you and to other people, to the people in your environment, to the people in the community. Asset is something that 
multiplies. He has the, the effect of multiplication. So assets will put money in your pocket. Liability takes money out. So most of the problem we have, especially in Nigeria, is that a lot of people focus on liabilities rather than assets. So they mistake both, like you just did now. They will be calling liability <laughs> asset, calling asset liability. You, you know, you hear people celebrating, ah, oh boy, I just buy one big Benz now, which is good though. Um, I like it though. Even me, I want one though. But if you check, most of those people, some of them, they are still paying rent in, you know, paying high rent and doing all those things. And they might not even have maybe a sustainable business. They might be working in paid employment. And in my head, I'm thinking, this, the cost for this vehicle would have been able to set up a business for you. If you understood what we are talking about, the financial intelligence, it would have been able to set up a business for you that will be able to cater for your needs and solve your immediate financial problems. And also, if you are smart enough and able to multiply it, multiply effects, you are able to grow it. And who knows, in a few months or a few years, you are able to still buy the bands. But you know the good news? The good news is you now have something that takes care of your bills without you thinking. That's what you have. That's what an asset will do for you. So your bills, you don't think about bills. Yeah. Asset will eliminate the thought of bills because it is not no more your effort. It is now other people's efforts, which we are going to touch later. Yes. So I hope we, we understood that. Yes. So um, this, this is uh, something very, very key to me. So um, I don't know how many of us have heard about habits uh, by Stevie Doctor I'll convey. Habits, seven habits, eight habits, and all of that. So habit is what we do all the time. So he came out with a certain um, principles of habits, of how we live, how we move, uh, and you know the kind of decisions we make. So he called them seven habits, not just seven, eight habits. So the first habit is uh, be proactive. Habit one, be proactive. So what does it mean to be proactive? Being proactive means that you, you are always, you stay from the cutting edge. You stay from the cutting edge. You stay from the place of, you're always prepared. You're always ready. You're always ready for opportunities. You, you move. Your thought processes are moving. There's always a movement. That's being proactive. So you are not just chilling and just waiting for somebody to make things happen for you. You make the things happen. So you are not waiting for people ah, to make things happen for me. No, you move and you make those things happen. Yes, yes. So um, habit two, begin with the end in mind. So this is very, very important. So this is one of the principles that has helped me in the past four or five years. So before you make any decision, think of what the end will look like. You want to think, okay, what would the end result be? What, what, would, what, what is this thing going to amount to if I make this decision now? Is it going to be a productive result? Is this something that's going to add value to me? Is this something that's going to create value? Is this something that's going to add value to people? So you want to think about that. That's very, very important. Um, so I'll, I'll be three. Put first thing first, the, the law of priorities. Yeah, we have to prioritize what we do. Schedule priorities, um, prioritize our schedules. Yeah, it's very, very important. I'll be four. Think win-win. So this is very important because especially in music and in business, especially what I spoke about before, that's why when playing in performance, think win-win means that you don't play to outshine others. You play to complement every other person. Yes, so a win-win situation is where this person is doing something good. You yourself, you are doing something good not to outshine or, you know, to cause um, distractions. Yeah, so you, 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 you are able to ensure that everybody is moving at the same pace, yes. So habit five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Yeah, the law of being emphatic. So this is very, very important because um, most times people think about themselves in most decision making that they want to do in business, music, whatsoever it is that they want to do. So when, you, when we say seek first to understand, so you want to um, be able to, to listen deeply to what other people are saying. Yeah? And you are able to make decisions based on not just as a selfish person, not just making selfish decisions, but making decisions that would be beneficial to both parties. Yes, to both parties. Yes. So habit six, synergize. Yeah, this is very important. Synergy. So the ability, principle of creative cooperation. So everybody 
creatively comes together to achieve a certain goal. Yeah, that's where goals come in. Yeah, so um, a bit seven, uh, sharpen the saw. So what we, are, what we are doing today now, we are sharpening the saw. So take, for instance, you want to cut down a tree. So maybe there was a tree you cut down last year and you used one ass. You just went to drop the ass maybe inside your kitchen in one corner. Hmm? Between last year and now, probably heat, water, different things, the ass would have, you know, rusted a bit. And this year now, you want to cut another tree. You go and pick up that ass. you find it more difficult to cut it. Why? Because there, has, there have been some rusting. So coming here to learn and to develop yourself is sharpening your saw so that you are able to cut the trees of the issues, the challenges, and music development in this time. Yeah. So, um, habit eight, find your voice and inspire others to find theirs. This is very, very important. So that's one of the key things that has ignited this meeting or this training, is um, that you are able to know, understand what your gifting is. We're going we're gonna to go, go into that. Okay, you now understand, okay, this is the gift that I have. You don't keep it to yourself. You bring it on the outside and find a way to reach out to people through your gift. That is what we are doing. You find a way to reach out to people. So when you, when you have found your talent or your ability, which is finding your voice, for musicians is your gift, your, your talent, your skill as a musician. So you now find a way to reach out to other people. Yeah, you inspire people. So I remember a quote by Les Brown, which says that distract, dispute, and inspire. So we, we have come here to distract you from every other distraction, every other thing you're worrying about, to dispute your, your current belief system and to inspire you into the way you're supposed to be thinking, into the right thought process, where you're, what you're supposed to know that will move you and push you forward in your industry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh. Yes, so um, I'm sure we can see this picture. So this is G Factor. Um, sorry, let me go back. Okay, so before, before the picture, um, I'm just going to talk about mentorship. So um, we cannot overemphasize what it means to have a mentor. So like I said, when I was playing then, I mentioned something about Bright Gain. I might not be close to him, or I went to their school, I might not be so close, but there are some things that you draw out from a mentor that the mentor did not release to you. So without the person even knowing, you have picked up a few things from them that you are able to use to move into the future, to move your talent forward, yes. So it's so important that you have a mentor, it's so, so, so important, it's so, so imperative, yes. Yeah, so uh, this is the meat for today, rediscovering and redefining your gifts. So the, I, I just put up some things. I don't know. We'll just try and see if we can see them. So I said your gift is your inherent ability that you do or able to perform effortlessly with or without financial reward. So when we say you have a gift, your, your talent, your skill, your ability, you, are, you were born with the gift of music or you were born with, oh, you have good ears for music, you can understand the art of music, so it is something inherent. When they say something inherent, it's something that is in you, something that is from you, from the inside. You are able to bring it out on the outside. Yeah? Yeah. Through refinement, through learning, through what we are doing here today, that's how you are able to bring out that inherent ability that you have on the inside. Yeah. So me, what I'm doing here today now, whether they are paying me or not, I'm happy to do it. That's a sign that it is a gift. How do I know that someone has a gift? The person is able to do it with or without financial reward. I can play music from now to tomorrow. Whether they give me anything or not is okay. I can speak from now to tomorrow. Whether they give me any financial remuneration is, is okay, it's fine. Because it is a gift, it's an inherent ability, an ability that comes from the inside out. Yes. So the next point here is what you love to do and what you're born to do. Yes, this is very, very important. So... When we say what you love to do and what you are born to do. So what you are born to do is your gift. 
What you love to do is your skill. It means your vocation, how you are able to channel what you were born to do. So some of us were born with the gifting of music. I was born with the gifting called my dad loved music. My dad was a musician when he was young. He played guitar and he used to sing a lot of songs. But me, I was born with, oh, I love music. Started listening to music from a young age and all of that. Now, that is what I was born to do. It's not left for me to now start asking myself and trying to find out what do I love to do? What do I love to do? So I now start to discover that, okay, I love playing drum. I have interest in drumming or playing the piano or playing the bass. So I, I, I hope we're getting the picture of that. So you are born to do this. This is your reason for being here. This is your essence. But you are now going to find out, okay, what do I love? Do I love singing? Do I love playing basketball? Do I love playing table tennis? All of this is dependent on you. It is your choice. It is you that will determine this factor. God has already determined one factor, which is the factor of giving you the gift, the ability for you to interpret music. So it is now left for me to now say, which medium do I want to interpret this music from? Is it through the keyboard, drum, bass? That's why you can find some people, they play more than one instrument. Why? Because they were gifted with the ability to interpret music. So they are able to do it with more than one tool or instrument. Yes. Um, so uh, our life is God's gift to us, and what we do with our gift is, what we do with our gift is, what we do with it is our gift back to God. Yes. So when we were born, we were all born with different abilities. So you hear some people, they say, ah, I don't get any talent, or I don't have any. I think that that's, that sounds very funny because every person on this earth was born with an ability. The difference is they are not knowledgeable about what it is that they have. So it's like a saying that says that the two most important days in your life is the day that you are born and the day that you knew why. That's the two most, not the day you die, the day that you knew why you were born. So they were born, they are born with an ability that they don't know about. So the question is, how are they going to refine this gift that they have that they are not aware of? That is why we are doing what we are doing today. That is why we have the school system. That's why we have the educational system. And just to, to correct, the word education, the original word is from a Greek word which says educe. And educe means to draw out. Educe means to draw out that which is within and inside of that person, not to instill. So there's a difference. That's why you find that Asians and some people in the West, when they give birth to their children, they put them in their play group, they put them in a, in a room filled with different toys and different uh, kind of stuff. And they look at that child. Some children will tilt to construction. Some will tilt to musical instruments. That is their forte. That is what they were designed to do. Yeah. So that's how most, some of the white people have been able to determine that, okay, this is my child that I gave birth to is gifted in so, 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 and so. So that will now help us to channel it and we can now give our gift back to God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the next point, maximize your gift. So how do, how do I maximize my gift? By learning, continuous learning. And I must state that growth is deliberate. Growth is deliberate. Growth is not you just eat, wake up, sleep, eat, wake up. No. You must fine-tune yourself. You must go through a process of learning, of developing. You must go through that process. Growth is deliberate. So there's a quote that says that some people died at age 25. They didn't get buried till 65. Why? Because they stopped growing. Yeah, we have a lot of that in Nigeria, especially in the leadership system, especially in the political system. We have a lot of men that have died since, or they are walking corpse, but they don't know why, because they stopped growing. They stopped learning. They blocked every channel of learning. Because when you learn, when you grow, you, get, you form new habits of adaptability. You are, you, are, you are not able to, you are exposed to new habits of adapt, uh, how to adapt to the new things that are happening around you. And especially as we are in the 21st century, so that's most of the problem we have, especially in Nigeria, in leadership, 
and in also in the music industry. So you must maximize your gift. Yes, so your gift is God's insurance policy. So when everybody was sent to earth by God from different means, different countries, different um, facets, different assets, God insured you with your gift, meaning that when this person lands on earth, there is something that is going to provide for this person for the rest of his life. Now, the job that is left for me is now to find out what is this gift that God has given me? What is this thing that God has put inside of me that the world is waiting to see? I'm reminded by a quote by Victor Hugo that said, there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. So, for your idea to manifest on the outside or your gift to manifest, it is how you fine-tune, how you finesse, how you develop. That is why we are here. We are here to look, reinvent, rediscover, redefine why we are musicians, why we are gifted people, why we are talented people, why we are born with this ability. Because every day I wake up and I ask myself, why am I even doing this music thing I would have been doing? But there is a reason why. Because that is your insurance policy. That is God paying you forward in life. That's God paying you forward in life. So he makes provision for a vision. So the vision for you now is your gift. The provision is the insurance policy that God has put in place ahead of you. Yeah, even before you were born. So, um, yeah, predestination. So, uh, like I was saying, predestination means a prior, prior moment. Prior, prior means that um, doing the work before the work or finishing the work before you start. Yeah, finishing the work before you start. So that's a prior. Prior moment is finishing the work before it's a predestination. Meaning that God set the course of your life from start to finish before you were born. He now allowed you to be born so that you can now discover or rediscover. Yes, you don't discover. You rediscover. Why? Because it's on the inside. It's already inherit inside of you. So you rediscover and redefine. Redefining means what we are doing, trying to develop, trying to pull you up so that you can be able to, you know, push it on the outside, yeah, and add value to yourself, to your family, to your society, and to the nation that you find yourself. Yeah, so six Ps. Yeah, so I'm just going to quickly touch one or two principles before I go to the G Factor. So, so six Ps by Brian Tracy, uh, a principle I learned many years ago, six piece which states that proper prior planning prevent poor performances. Proper prior planning. So proper prior. Prior was like what I said before, predestination, finishing before you start. So you see, when a contractor or an engineer wants to build a house, in the engineer's mind, the house is finished even before people start carrying cement. They finish that building. Uh, when he looks at the land, he's seen a six-story building. You, you are seeing a land. Uh, yeah, that's how God designed you. That's how you were designed with your gift, with, your, with God's insurance policy, which is your gift that you rediscover. Yes, you rediscover. So proper prior planning prevents poor performance. So what we are doing here today is like a prior planning for the next three to six months of the, remain, of, of, of the year. So we are, we, are, we are planning. This is a prior. This is something we are taking time out to prep ourselves. Yes. Yes. So G Factor. Yeah, so I'm just going to quickly talk about G Factor. So we all know G Factor, which is the studio that we are here today. Um, this was not how the studio was when we started. Uh, let me just quickly go to the pictures. So, so this is how the studio was when we started. You can imagine. That's the room. Oh. That's where I was sleeping, eating doing everything, practicing, reading. So you can imagine. So how do, you, how do you see this and in your mind you are seeing where we are today? So, so this is why I talked about predestination. This is why I talked about um, finishing the work before we start or before you start. So this is where G-Factor started from. This is the room that we were. We're staying there, doing everything there. As you can see, there's a bookshelf there. There are books. So what is one thing that is constant? Growth was constant or is constant. So you find that even in that small place, as it were, development did not cease to happen. 
I was still practicing. I was still reading. I was still developing myself. Why? Because I knew that God has insured me. So for me to be able to access the insurance or the HMO, let me use that word, is my ability to refine, redefine, rediscover. Yes, so that it can take you to the journey. So this is where G Factor started from in a one room. I think this was in a 20, 20, this was from 2013, 14, yeah, 15. Yeah, this was where I was when I even traveled out of the country. I was here. Yes. Yeah, so you see that the idea is beginning to take shape. The idea is beginning to make sense. The idea is beginning to look like, look like it. So you can imagine, okay, so now the story is, when, I, when we got to this place, when we got here, so there was a woman, when I traveled, we were in the same flight together. I've said the story a couple of times. And I said to her, I know she's a very well doing man in my church that I go to. And I said, Ma, I have this idea. This is what I'm planning. This is what I'm working on. Blah, blah, blah. Trying to set up a studio. And I said, oh, Ma, please, can you help us support us with some funding and all of that? She said, Ah, no, I can't give you my money. You know this thing, the capital intensity. That's the word she used and all that. So I just laughed. I said, Ah, Ma, you know, this thing, you have to give us a chance. You have to believe in what we are saying. And of course, she did not believe in it. Yes, but that did not deter me from the determination or from, the, from what we believe or what we have seen. So in 2012 was when I heard the name G-Factor. In my ears, I was practicing. I heard G-Factor Studio. Write it down. And I wrote it down. So it's very important that you write down your vision, your ideas. Every idea you get, please write it down. Some of the songs that I've composed, I composed them many, many years ago, 2012, 2011. But when they came... Some of them just came by the title. I just wrote down the name, the title, and the keys where the song will be played. And see, today, now, the songs are becoming something that will make sense because I, I wrote it down. Write down the vision and make it plain. You want, you want to ensure that you write down your vision. Why? Because whatsoever you name, you own. What you name, you own. Never forget this. What you name, you own. When you name something, you, you make it legal. You make an idea legal by documenting it. The idea becomes a legal document when you write it down, yeah? Because ideas are like spirits. They are like ghosts. They fly around or they are like angels. And angels are not permissible in this realm. Why? Because they do not have flesh and blood. So they are not natural. They are going to be going against natural laws. So are ideas. And ideas are what rules the world today. So when an idea comes, you want to ensure that you document it, you write it down, yes. So this is G Factor, and we started pushing, started because, you know, as a musician in church, they will pay you small money. And so I, I, the, the, the principle was every month as you get your money, go to the market, buy something, even if it's one microphone, one cable, one wire, one drumstick, one hi-hat, one simba. That was the principle. And just imagine the principle and imagine where we are today. So just... Getting small, 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 small money. Because some people still think, ah, how is this even possible? How much did they even they pay you safe? You understand? Yes, it is possible. Why? Because it is a vision that was given. It was not something you thought about. It was something that was given. Yes, what is given to you, there is provision. Yes. So, you see, the studio is now becoming, so at this point, people we started having customers, people started coming, people started seeing that, oh, this idea makes sense. This idea is something that we can actually plug into. This is something that, oh, it makes sense. We can patronize them. We can come. We can come to the studio. We can do something. People can, so you can see in the picture, there are plastic chairs there, as you can see. That's what we could afford at the time. We didn't mind. We just go. And let me tell you one shocking story about these plastic chairs. Eh? Sometimes we didn't have plastic chairs when somebody called that they are coming to the studio. Do you know what I would do? As they called me that they are coming, I would run to the market to go and buy a plastic chair. And I would quickly run to the market to go and buy. Sometimes the people would have even come before I come back. But immediately I come, I will find a way to sneak it in. Oh my goodness. They would think I just bought it from outside. <laughs> oh yeah. They would think, ah, this guy, oh, okay, okay, you can bring chairs. But they never knew that there were no chairs there. Yes, they never knew. They never knew. So you see, now the studio is becoming something. We have lights now. We have, you know, equipment. Sound is good. Sounding good. Everything is going well as planned. People are inspired. People love it. People love it. Yes, people love it. 
you see? So this was in 2018. So we moved to a finer place, better than where we were before. Ah, it was exciting. People were happy. Ah, wow, this is good. So in our mind, we thought that this was the epoch or this was the apex or summit of the idea. That's what we thought. We thought that, oh, this is it. This is it. But the good news about your ability or your gift, when it is given, or your insurance policy, is that you do not know the final product. You have no idea what the final product is. You are just the, 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 the pipeline, the principle of the pipeline. You are just the pipeline that is used, that God is using to manifest that idea. Yes, you don't know what the end result will be. But one thing that is constant or that is necessary is that you keep moving. Never stop. We had the option to stop. There were times that people didn't come. For one month, nobody came to the studio. Uh, for one good moon, one single soul no come, even more than a month. People were just doing as if they didn't even know, they didn't see it. But you must keep moving. Your ability to stay, stay in power. You must develop staying power. Yes, you must be tenacious. You must say, anyhow, do it anyhow. That's what you must say to yourself. I will do it anyhow, regardless of what people think or not. Why? They did not give you the idea. People did not give you the idea. So you want to ensure that you press on. Why? Because Barack Obama said something. He said the future only rewards those who press on. That's how he became the president of the United States, the first black president to ever rule the United States because of his belief system. Yeah, so as we can see, the studio is now looking yummy, delicious. Yeah, but one thing that people don't understand is that everything was inch by inch. So... You know, my mentor will say something. He will say that by the yard is hard, but inch by inch, anything is ascension. So what does that mean? It means that if you want to go the long route, it's more difficult. But if you take it step by step, you are able to achieve your goal. Yes. If you take it step by step, you are able to attain the heights that you have envisaged or envisioned, that you have seen or was shown to you by God. Yes. So you want to ensure that you keep moving, you don't stop and you take it inch by inch, gradually you will get to your destination. That you did not set. Remember, the destination was not set by you. So that's something that is very, very key for gifted people, talented people. Your destination was not set by you. So you don't know. So my mentor will say that you don't know what your limits are, but you act like you don't have any. So you don't know what your limits are. You don't know what the points that you are going to stop. You don't know. You have no idea. But the only option that you have for you and to you is to keep moving. Yes, keep moving. Wow. So you can see the studio is now becoming, 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 becoming. So in, in, in uh, the previous training that we had, we, we touched about work and job, where I said that your work is what you become. So if you notice, you will notice that we are becoming more like what we talk about or more like what we believe. So you will become what you believe. That is what you will become. You will become what you have seen, what was shown to you, or what you heard. Yes, you will become that. That is what you will become. Yes, so as you can see, the studio has taken shape. So let me just flip back quickly. Yes, so th that's the G factor story. So I'm going to say this, that when you're on a journey, there is progress. When there is no progress, you are not on a journey. Don't forget this. In the scale of your life, when you look at yourself, Am I moving or am I stagnant? So when you find that you are, you are moving, it means that you are on a journey and you are able to track and to trace progress, growth, development. But when you are not moving and there's no journey, there's no progress. It means that you are not on a journey. So you need to find yourself on a journey. You need to find yourself on a path that will expand you, that will expand you, that will create platforms for you to to leap and grow your wings on your way down. Yes. You want to leap and grow your wings on your way down. Yes. So I'm just quickly going to talk about um, uh, a few principles that I think is very important. The principle of OQP, only quality people. So you want to ensure that the people that you surround yourself with are quality people, people that will believe in you, people that will push you, people that will help you to, to move your dreams forward. And also the next principle is the principle of OPT, other people's time. So as musicians, we need to learn to manage time. Other people's time. We need to learn to maximize time. Why? Because time equals to your life. Your time is your life. Your life is your time. So also another principle that we're going to talk about is the principle of 
OPR, other people's resources. So we need to learn to maximize other people's resources at our disposal. Like, for instance, now, the human resource of Mr. Chidi that came today, that was OPR. He brought his resource of his gift, of his talent, his ability, the ability to teach, to train, and to play music. So I leveraged on that principle, OPR, other people's resources. So the next principle we're going to talk about is OPM, other people's money. Yeah, so this principle is like the principle of where they say you go to the bank to, to get a loan or to borrow money. So you want to ensure that you are smart enough, you are financially intelligent enough to take money. The reason for taking money is not for flanger or is not for liability, but to invest and to spend on assets. Yes, so that's the reason for taking a loan. So most time people take loan and they go and buy shoe or they go and buy clothes. They go to... Um, they go to Balogun and they buy the latest designer. Yeah, so that's abuse. So when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. Yes, you will abuse what you don't understand. Yes, you will abuse it. You will abuse what you don't understand. Yes. So, um, so I believe that we, we've been able to catch one or two things. So I'm just going to say, be a pencil. So my mentor will say that, Become a pencil in the hand of God and write new chapters in their lives. So you want to ensure that as you are rediscovering and redefining your gift, you want to become a pencil in the hand of God. So me, I'm becoming a pencil. I'm a pencil because I'm writing new chapters in your life. I'm helping to ensure that there is a path. Follow not where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail for others to follow. So I want to ensure that there's a path for you to leverage upon. That is why we are here. That is what we are doing today. Yeah, so you must become a pencil. So PDP, um, that's one of the phrases that, um, that I've dwelled on in this year. PDP meaning purpose-driven people. So you want to ensure that the people that you keep or you hang around are PDP, purpose-driven people, people that understand their why. So purpose is your, your why for being here, the original intent of your existence or of your ability or your gifting as a musician. That is your purpose. That is your design. That is your God-given idea. Yes. So you want to ensure that you have PDP around you. Your gift is your leadership. So you know when God said to Adam in the Bible that um, have dominion over the fishes and everything, you know when people will say that you're supposed to dominate people? No. What the, 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 um, the intent of that statement was that your leadership is your gift. So you are going to lead by way of utilizing and maximizing your gift. That's the way that you are going to lead. That's the way that you are going to lead. So your gift is necessary. Your gift made you necessary. Your gift is why you are here. So every day I ask myself, okay, if I'm not doing what I'm doing, what would I be doing? And if I'm not doing what I'm doing, will people even need me in some of the places I find myself? The answer will be no. So your gift made you necessary. Your gift made you necessary. Your gift is your leadership. So you are supposed to lead with your gift. So imagine a country or a nation where everybody is leading with their gifts. We we'll have a beautiful country. Why? People are not dominating people. They are dominating their gifts. Yes. So I'm just going to end by saying this, that your gift is as important as your existence. The reason why you wake up every morning is because there is something in you. There is something on your inside that the world is waiting, that people are waiting to see. That, you know, when the Bible says that um, manifestations of the sons of God, your gift is your manifestation. So the reason why you woke up the next day is so that you'll be a blessing to your society, to your environment, to the places that you find yourself. So it's so, so imperative. It's so important that we understand that our purpose is tied to what we are born to do, what we love to do, and the reason why we wake up every day is so that we can impact society and we can transform lives. Thank you. Thank you so much.